Welcome to CBS Sports HQ presented by Geico. Jenny Dell, Tommy Tran here. Now, Tommy, I just love when people are fully in their element. And that's why I am so excited for today's show because our Bryant McFadden, he's back where he belongs. He's in an, a familiar place. Yep, HQ presented by Geico and our two-time Super Bowl champ is at Steelers camp. His cousin co-host Patrick Peterson now on the team, Jenny. I love it's like a family affair, and we're going to take you to Latrobe, PA, where Pittsburgh finished 9-8, and eight, and Mike Tomlin still hasn't suffered a losing record as head coach of this team that he took over 16 years ago. Steelers are expected to finish last in a very tough AFC North division, according to oddsmakers at Caesars Sportsbook. All right, let's bring in the much-hyped Brian McFadden, BMAC, we hyped you up. Glad to see you. Thanks for joining us here on the queue. Uh, let's start with Kenny Pickett. I know Steelers Nation curious to get your thoughts on what you've seen and what type of step Kenny Pickett can take this year. Well, first and foremost, it's happy to be back home, my <laughs> home away from home. Uh, they greeted, with, greeted me with an outstanding breakfast. Uh, pancakes, nice syrup. I really have enjoyed myself so far. But in transitioning to the Pittsburgh Steelers, yes, uh, Tommy, it's, it's all about Kenny Pickett. Year two with Kenny in this organization, and so far he has really taken st steps in the right direction in regards to his leadership on and off the football field. And, and, and I see a difference in confidence, you know, in, in his con control and command over this offense. And so far they have been extremely aggressive, you know, taking shots down the football field, field allowing Kenny to really be aggressive with his volume of attempts in, in regards to splash like plays. And that's something that we really didn't see a year ago with Kenny Pickett when he became the starter for the offense. So hopefully they can continue that mindset and being aggressive because when you talk about his pass catchers, he has a lot of pass catchers to choose from in regards to taking shots down the football field. We're taking a look at Kenny Pickett's numbers last season. BMAC first five games and then final eight games. He improved mightily that second half. You mentioned splash plays and they have a, a human highlight reel in George Pickens who made tremendous one handed catches, particularly in prime time. What's it going to take for Pickett and Pickens and this group to be a little more consistent this season? I just continue, continue to, what they, to do what they've done so far, individually speaking, Tommy, just winning their one-on-one -on -one opportunities. And that's totally up to George Pickens. And I can tell you this much, he has been a nightmare for all the defensive backs he's faced. He's timely getting behind the coverage in one-on-one -on -one opportunities and 11-on-11, 7-on-7 uh, opportunities as well. And he just really continues to display a level of confidence that you don't really see from a year two guy, especially at the wide receiver position. So when you talk about the quarterback wide receiver relationship that we're starting to see established with Kenny Pickett and George Pickens, if they can continue the pace that they have set forth so far here in Latrobe, it's going to be a fun ride for those two guys in the Steeler uniforms. And it, and it might be a nightmare for the opposing defensive backs they will see week in and week out on their schedule. Let's get to the other side of the ball. P twice, of course, is now in the secondary. Patrick Peterson, your cuz, entering his first season with the Sealers. We kind of documented it here in CBS Sports HQ with our weekly interviews with Patrick. How's he looking out there so far? Obviously, also already being one of the leaders on that side of the ball, BMAC. Well, he looks good, but for me, it's kind of hard to really get used to seeing Pat P in number 20. You know what I mean? The last few years, he's what he had number seven last year, and of course, you know, 21 throughout his professional career. But he's wearing number 20, and for me, that was my old number. So seeing Pat P in number 20 here in Pittsburgh, I'm getting used to it, but I love it. Uh, he's, fit in, he's fit in perfectly. Had an opportunity to talk to Mike Tomlin earlier on the podcast, and man, he's just, when I mentioned Pat Peterson's name to Mike Tomlin, man, he couldn't stop smiling. Man, he said the experience has been has been better than what he anticipated it being. And that says a lot. The leadership that he provides, not just on the defensive side, Tommy, but in the with the team in totality is a big time. Plus his ability to mentor some of the young defensive backs. Uh, he's been able to do that so far. And from Pat P's uh, uh, side of things, he's loving the experience. The fans have greeted him here with open arms. I don't know if he got pancakes like I, I got this morning, but they have greeted him with open arms and he's really embraced being a part of Steeler Nation and, and he's ready to put on a show. And most importantly, Tommy, he's willing to stick his hand in that pile and try to hoist the seventh sticky Lombardi. It would be the seventh 
when it happens. The final game in Viva Las Vegas, that is the Super Bowl, if you're not aware. But that that's where the, the, the where the last ball game will be, and that's where Pat P is trying to have his last game take place in Viva Las Vegas. And of course, CBS will have you covered for the Super Bowl. And, and to get there, though, the Steelers are going to have to beat the odds. B Mac, I mentioned their odds in the AFC North are also favored to not make the playoffs at Caesar Sportsbook. So what is your take about what a 9-8 season last year was and what could be for Pittsburgh this year? Well, you talk about the 9-8 season a year ago. Look at some of the adversities they faced last year. Still finding a way to finish with, the, with an above 500 record. Musical chairs at the quarterback position. Mitchell Trubisky started the season as a starter, but clearly the production wasn't there. They brought in a rookie in Kenny Pickett. He went through growing pains, but they still found a way to win nine games. Mike Tomlin, he's never, never surrendered a losing season in his professional career. So number one, I believe Mike Tomlin will continue that streak. Number two, Tommy, I believe the Pittsburgh Steelers will have a better record than what they had in 2022 based on the experience, their young rookie quarterback game in his rookie campaign, and with the added talent they've been able to add to this roster. So I hear what the odd makers are saying out in Vegas with them being a favorite to not make the playoffs, but I disagree wholeheartedly. And I'm not saying that because I'm a former Pittsburgh Steeler. I'm not saying that because I'm currently here in Latrobe. I'm not saying that because they gave me pancakes with warm syrup. I'm saying that because I know ball. And I know the Pittsburgh Steelers will make the playoffs somehow, some way. I love it. BMAC is fired up. Time now for the Geico 15. And BMAC, it is bold prediction season once again. You kind of hinted at it already. What is your bold prediction for the Steelers in 2023? Tommy, go bold or go home. My bold prediction for the Pittsburgh Steelers in 2023 is the Pittsburgh Steelers will compete in the AFC championship game. Clip it and save it. What is today's date? August the 2nd, 2023. BMAC just gave you the bold, the boldest prediction that you will get the entire season and it will become a reality. The Pittsburgh Steelers will participate in the AFC Championship game this year. That's an early clubhouse leader. I, I wrote it down, BMAC. 8-2-23 AFC Championship game for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Our thanks to Brian McFadden from Steelers Camp Latrobe, PA. Our training camp tour continues here on CBS Sports HQ. Of course, we've got the Steelers covered today. We also have the Arizona Cardinals on tap. Our lead NFL insider Jonathan Jones in Glendale, Arizona, after being in Henderson, Nevada, covering the Raiders yesterday. And then taking a look at the other dates on the schedule. Friday's a big day for us. We've got Pete Prisco, Charles Davis, and Rick Spielman down here in South Florida for the Dolphins. Evan Washburn at the Titans. And don't forget about the Jets in just a few days. The Hard Knocks team will make their debut two days after we will be there. All things covered, it is a Steelers affair with two-time Super Bowl champ Brian McFadden and Patrick Peterson. Again, it's not just football. It is all things covered. Make sure to scan that QR code and check out the fellas today.